Good evening and welcome to worship on this good Friday evening. Thank you again for gathering with God's people who are gathering, though, around television sets and computer screens and phones, wherever you all are watching. And hopefully, I pray, participating in this worship service tonight. Tonight, we're going to continue a, a, a tradition on Good Friday evenings the past couple of years. We've worshiped in a way we've called where the word meets the world. And we read through the seven last words of Jesus from the cross. It's a kind of tenebrae service. And then tonight we'll be, again, thinking about where that word of Jesus intersects the world we live in now, particularly in a time of global pandemic, and thinking about the broken places where God's people are suffering and how God meets us there. We invite you to join us in word and prayer and song. We have candles uh, on our cross, and towards the end of the service tonight, we're going to light candles in our service of prayer around the cross. And I invite you now to pause this video and find a couple of candles, maybe enough for whoever in your household is watching this with you. And we'll invite you to light candles with us a little bit later. On this Good Friday night, we worship as we live in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The first word from the cross comes from Luke chapter 23. Two others also who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. Our first broken place is our failure to collaborate in sharing resources and taking action to confront the global pandemic. Headline from the American Journal of Managed Care, as the United States prepares for what some experts warn could be the worst week yet of the coronavirus, that would be this week, National attention has been focused on the disease's current epicenters in New York and New Jersey. However, across the country, the pandemic is slowly seeping into the nation's economically vulnerable populations and is already taking a toll on minority communities. Native Americans also are particularly at risk of experiencing devastating consequences of COVID-19. Father, forgive us. Forgive us for the ways we've been quick to take care of ourselves first and forgotten about our neighbors. Forgive us for pride and arrogance that have made us slow to react to the global spread of COVID-19. Forgive us for the ways we participate in and prop up unjust systems which lead to disproportionate suffering among the poor. Father, forgive us for the ways we shrink from your call and fail to trust that even now, especially now, you can and will work through us to provide help and healing and hope. Lord Jesus, you gave your life for us and for the whole world. You suffered and died that we might be made whole. Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise, for it was grace that bought my liberty. I do not know just why he came to love me so. He looked beyond my fault and saw my need. I shall forever lift mine eyes to Calvary to view the cross where Jesus died for me. How marvelous the grace that caught my falling soul. He looked beyond my fault and saw my need. 
He looked beyond my fault and saw my need. The second word is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, beginning at verse 39. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Our meditation includes where there are broken places, those confined in prisons and refugee camps and detention centers. God, our shelter, as many of us have the blessing of homes and safe haven, we remember those who are confined in prisons, detention centers, homeless shelters, refugee camps, and other facilities where physical distancing is not possible. Protect the adults, the elders, and the children in these places. Protect those who guard, guide, and care for them. Bring hope and healing to the desperate and forgotten. Lord Jesus, you gave your life for us and for the whole world. You suffered and died that we might be made whole. The third word is from John chapter 19, verses beginning at verse 25. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, woman, here is your son. And then he said to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. Our third broken place is those whose work removes them from safety and family, including doctors, nurses, lab techs, caregivers, and custodians, to name a few. Merciful God, you reveal on the cross of Christ that your healing power is with us. Strengthen, encourage, and encourage those whose work among the sick in public health services and in the medical profession, caregivers and nurses, attendants, doctors, and all who commit themselves to caring for the sick and their families. Sustain them when their efforts seem futile or when death prevails. Encourage them when they are separated from loved ones because of their work. 
Increase their trust in your power, even to overcome death and pain and crying. Protect those who clean rooms and clinics to keep patients and health care providers free of illness. Inspire, give insight and hope to all researchers. Focus now on developing effective treatment of COVID-19 and a vaccine. Lord Jesus, you gave your life for us and for the whole world. You suffered and died that we might be made whole. The fourth word is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 15, beginning at verse 33. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Our fourth broken place includes those who suffer from loneliness, depression, and other forms of mental illness. God of peace, protect and guard those who are most vulnerable to incapacitating depression, loneliness, and other forms of mental illness you know their weaknesses and their needs. Assure them that even in the darkness, you walk with them to bring light and hope. Strengthen counselors, social workers, and others who are working diligently to provide mental health care without the comfort of physical gatherings. Lord Jesus, you gave your life for us and for the whole world. You suffered and died that we might be made whole. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you Oh, sometimes. 
the tree. It causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they nailed him to a tree? Were you causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? The fifth word from the cross is from Recorded in John 19, verse 28. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. Headlines this week from the Wall Street Journal. The number of Americans seeking unemployment benefits continued to surge at record levels bringing the total number of applications to nearly 17 million since the coronavirus pandemic shut down swaths of the U.S. economy. O God, the heavens declare your glory and tell of your work in creation. From you come the gifts of our bodies and minds, our skills and abilities, and the opportunity to use these gifts in sustaining our lives and in helping our neighbors. Give help and hope to those whose livelihood is insecure, to those who are bearing heavy burdens and stressful times at work, for those whose work is tedious or dangerous, to those who have experienced failures at work, to those who have lost a job and their only source of income, and to all who face any difficulty in their lives of labor. Surround them with your never-failing love. Free them from restlessness and anxiety. Keep them in every perplexity and distress. And renew them in facing the unique opportunities and challenges of daily life and work in this time of the global pandemic. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus, you gave your life for us and for the whole world. You suffered and died that we might be made whole.
The sixth word is from the Gospel of John, chapter 19, beginning at verse 29. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Our sixth broken place is for those who are in intensive care or close to death. God of promise, pour out your spirit on all people living with illness for which there is no cure. Comfort patients in intensive care units and comfort their families and loved ones who cannot be at their bedsides and medical staff who are sacrificing their all to attend to them. Draw near to all who are close to death. Help them to know that you claim them as your own. Deliver them from fear and pain. Lord Jesus, you gave your life for us and for the whole world. You suffered and died that we might be made whole. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of glory died, my richest gain I count but loss, and poor contempt on all my pride. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, save in the death of Christ my God. All loving things that charm me most, I sacrifice them to his blood. See from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingle down. Did such love and sorrow meet? Or thorns compose so rich a crown? Were the whole realm of nature mine that were a present far too small, love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all.
The seventh word from the Gospel according to St. Luke, the 23rd chapter. It was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. While the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus crying with a loud voice said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Jesus was a loser. There should be no doubt about that now on this Good Friday after hearing the words that he spoke from the cross. These words are not the words spoken by a winner, by a champion, by the kind of champions who enthrall us. On Good Friday, there was no hoisting a trophy in the air. There's no declaration that that's what happens when you give 110%. There would be no ticker tape parade through Jerusalem, no trip to Disney World. The prophet Isaiah saw it coming centuries earlier when he wrote, he was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. We esteemed him not because we prefer saviors and salvation to come in much more attractive and exciting packages. We like our saviors strong, a celebrity with star, star power who could wow us with talents that would allow us to, be, to remain safe spectators of his dazzling dignity. But the cross eliminates Jesus from that kind of candidacy he died on the cross, a loser. The good news for us on this Good Friday is that Jesus' death is the victory of a loser in a world of would-be, wannabe winners. His victory is our victory over sin and death and the powers of evil. My former teacher, Gerhard Ferdi, put it this way, Jesus comes and goes the way of what we think is a loser. He refuses to go steadfastly, refuses to go the way of the first Adam. He refuses to try and be a God. He goes the other way. He decides to become a human being. He sticks to it until the very end. Nothing will sway him from his mission, not even torture, not even death on a cross. Having loved his own, we heard last night in John's gospel, he loved them until the end, no matter what which is what he, is meant when, what he meant when he said from the cross, it is finished or it is accomplished. He became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. And so this is his victory. The resurrection alone, Easter morning, is not simply the victory. If that were so, if it was only about Easter, then he would be our kind of winner after all, snatching defeat, snatching victory from defeat in overtime, despite things not going well the whole game. But it was precisely by losing in a world of winners that victory becomes possible. For God shocks everyone by raising this loser from the dead. How else, how else could God get through to us but through losing? How else could we know that God's love for us isn't conditional upon our winning at life, but rather is unconditional even in our losing? Our crucified God doesn't meet us on the other side of illness and suffering and death, but meets us on the way through it, right where we are now. Thanks be to God for the loser who takes all. His victory is our victory. Amen. Lord Jesus, you gave her life for us and for the whole world. 
you suffered and died that we might be made whole. conclude our worship tonight by whispering the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.